Hello, my name is Adolfo, and today I'll be doing my presentation on nortriptyline. So as a brief introduction, this medication is used to treat mental and mood problems such as depression. It may help improve mood and feelings of well-being, uh, relieve anxiety and tension, and increase energy level. This medication belongs to a class um, of medications called tricyclic antidepressants, also known as TCAs. It works by affecting the balance of certain natural chemical, also known as neurotransmitters, in the brain. It has many other off-label indications. To provide some background for this drug, um, it is a second-generation TCA, um, and its main indication is for the treatment of major depression. Tricyclic antidepressants delay the need for dopaminergic uh, therapy in early Parkinson's disease as well. Um, to go into some of the pharmacokinetics of nortriptyline, for its absorption, orally it results in a maximum plasma level in about 5 hours, um, plus or minus 1.9 hours. For its volume of distribution, it's estimated after intravenous administration is 1,633, plus or minus 268. Um, for its metabolism of nortriptyline, it proceeds by demethylation and hydroxylation. And um, for its uh, excretion or elimination, the half-life is about 26 hours, so a very long-acting um, tricyclic antidepressant. For its mechanism of action, um, it is not quite fully understood, but um, it is believed that nortriptyline either inhibits the reuptake of the neurotransmitter serotonin at the neuronal membrane, or it acts as the level of beta adrenergic receptors. Um, it displays a more selective reuptake inhibition for noradrenaline, which may explain increased symptom improvement after nortriptyline therapy. Um, tricyclic antidepressants do not inhibit monoamine oxidase, nor do they affect dopamine reuptake. For dosing, specifically for depression, um, in ages 6 to 12, um, usually dosed at 1 to 3 mg per k per day, and you can divide that between three to four um, equal doses. Um, if they're more than 12, we usually tend to dose between 30 to 50 mg um, QD, and you can either do that as a single dose or a divided dose. Um, for the indication of nocturnal enuresis, uh, for the ages of six to seven, um, 10 mg at bedtime, eight to 11, it's 10 to 20 at bedtime. Anyone over 11, it's 25 to 35 mg at bedtime. If they're using it for um, ADHD, uh, it's 0 0.5 mg per cake per day orally, um, with a max of 2 mg per cake per day or 100 mg, whichever one is lesser. As for monitoring, um, as an antidepressant, um, this specific range for nortriptyline is between 50 to 150 nanograms. Um, patients using nortriptyline needed moder uh, need monitoring for suicidal ideation, especially at the start of therapy or when making any dosage changes. Um, clinicians should frequently monitor cardiac parameters such as heart rate, EKG, blood pressure in adults who already have existing cardiac disease, um, and elderly patients. Um, you also want to monitor for any improvements and or worsening of depression while on this medication. Um, as stated earlier, nortriptyline um, is FDA approved for the treatment of depression. Um, however, it is not FDA approved to be used in children, but it, it is prescribed off-label for depression in children. Um, there's been lots of studies done recently that shows that it is um, efficacious for children, but as stated, it's not FDA approved. Um, and then also nortriptyline can be used for a lot of off-label indications which have been widely widely accepted as this medication has been around for quite some time and has been used for these off-label indications um, some of these include such as chronic pain diabetic neuropathy uh, persistent myofascial pain trigeminal neuralgia post uh, therapeutic neuralgia smoking cessation migraine prophylaxis and neurogenic cough some warnings is that uh, definitely should not use nortriptyline if you recently had heart had a, a heart attack. Um, do not use nortriptyline if you have used a MAOI inhibitor um, in the past 14 days, and this is such as linezolid, methylene blue injection, so on and so forth. 
Um, some young patients have thoughts um, about suicide when first taking an antidepressant. Um, so if someone has already had some failed um, uh, treatments on other TCAs or other antidepressants, definitely um, bring that up to your attention that it's more or less the same um, things to watch out for. Um, so stay to stay alert and changes in moods and symptoms. Report any new or worsening symptoms to the doctor. And this can include and range from mood or behavior changes, um, increased anxiety, increased panic attacks, or trouble sleeping. Some precautions um, is that it is very important to let the doctor know to always be checking your progress at regular visits to allow um, for changes in your dose, whether to be increased or decreased. Um, blood tests may be needed to check for any unwanted effects. Uh, tell your doctor right away if you feel even more depressed or thoughts about hurting yourself or others or suicidal thoughts, as that is a major indication that the medication might not be for uh, that specific individual. Nortriptyline may cause a serious condition called serotonin syndrome if taken together with certain medications, so definitely running interaction checks or checking um, all the other medications patients might be on that can increase the amount of serotonin in the system. Um, do not use nortriptyline with boosperone, uh, fentanyl, lithium, tryptophan, St. John's worth, or other migraine medications. As mentioned in the previous um, bullet point, um, it those medications do tend to increase the risk for serotonin syndrome. <clears throat> Check with the doctor right away if you're having any chest pain, discomfort, nausea, vomiting, pain, um, specifically any discomfort in the arms, jaw, back, or neck, any trouble breathing, slurred speech, or weakness. Um, definitely if there's any fast pounding or even like an uneven heartbeat, whether you feel like um, there's palpitations or any like heart murmurs that you might be not be able to explain. Um, there might be some um, cardiac effects that the medication is known to cause that might be causing the patient. Um, do not drive or take or do anything else that can be dangerous, um, depending on like work life's uh, habits as well too. And that is until you know how the medicine affects you. Some people tend to sometimes get a little bit sleepy on this medication. So if you're out driving all day as a truck driver, don't want to be taking that medication during the daytime. Uh, so on and so forth. So definitely don't take the medication until you know how it affects you. Um, some quick adverse reactions. Um, it does have a black box warning, and as stated before, this is for the increased risk of suicide in specifically adolescents, children, and young adults. Um, they have a higher prevalence for um, this risk and other like psychiatric disorders. So definitely keep an eye out on that. The most serious adverse effects usually tend to be orthostatic hypotension. Um, it can cause hypertension, also syncope, ventricular arrhythmias, AV block, MI stroke, pretty much a lot of the cardiac side effects this medication is known to um, exacerbate. Um, also granulocytosis, uh, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, um, and angioedema for those who have severe allergic reactions to this medication. Um, some neuropsychiatric adverse re um, reactions can and are not limited to um, EPS symptoms, um, ataxia, tardative dyskinesia, um, hallucination, psychosis, exacerbations, hypomania, or mania, um, exacerbation of depression, suicidality, um, serotonin syndrome, SIADH, um, hyperthermia, and seizures. Um, cardiotoxicity, as I've mentioned a couple times already um, in this PowerPoint, is the hallmark adverse drug reaction with TCAs. Um, in the case of like TCAs, um, the fast cardiac sodium channels are inhibited and then that leads to the cardiac arrhythmias. And on the EKG, um, it can actually widen that QRS complex um, that's often seen and noted. Um, patient can also have withdrawal symptoms um, if discontinued abruptly um, is usually when they'll have these symptoms and that can range from dizziness, GI problems such as nausea and vomiting, um, can lead to increased anxiety, headaches, restlessness, and sometimes even trigger seizures. Uh, just uh, another quick adverse reactions of this medication. These are more of the um, common side effects that can be seen from this medication. Usually drowsiness, uh, xerostomia, so dry mouth, dizziness, constipation, blurred vision, 
palpitations, tachycardia, impaired coordination, increased appetite, weight gain, libido changes, impotence and gynecomastia, and galacteria. Um, there are a lot of drug interactions that um, tend to interact with TCAs in general and or triptyline. Uh, the list can go on. Um, I included some of the more um, common ones, um, so to say, per up to date. Um, so definitely St. John's Wort, as that's available over the counter. A lot of people um, try to use St. John's Wort first before going into like actual um, prescribed medication for like their depression. So a lot of people don't know that you're not supposed to take them together. They think adding that St. John's Wort plus a TCA or whatever the doctor prescribed to them will help them get rid of their depression more. But then that just builds up their toler their um, receptors of for the serotonin, and that's what can eventually lead to serotonin syndrome. Um, Dronadrenone is another medication. Um, Isocarboxazid or linozolid, those are the MAOIs that should be avoided while on this medication. Uh, methylene blue, another one, and then metoclopramide, um, common nausea, vomiting medication that is pretty frequently prescribed tends to interact with this medication. Uh, just some clinical pros um, that you can take away from this is that um, once again, this medication can be used for a lot of off-label conditions, and you will see out in practice um, a lot of those conditions, Such and this can range from, as stated previously, chronic pain, diabetic neuropathy, um, myofascial pain, neur any neuralgia problems, migraine prophylaxis, um, the list can go on for what it's actually being prescribed for, even though it's not FDA approved for it, but it still has been shown studies that it can work for those specific conditions. Um, Nortriptyline has also been uh, useful in patients trying to quit smoking. So uh, smoking sensation tends to be uh, one of the main um, off-label indications that this medication is uh, typically prescribed for. And that concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you so much. These are my references. Thank you.